All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hi, it's Alicia Buchanan, aka Soulful Sister Searching and creator of Golden Opportunity to Develop a Family Owned Business. And I'm coming to you all. Uh, I'm excited to be joining you all live. Um, on this day to talk about launching your dreams and creating an extraordinary life. And I have a wonderful guest with us, um, Tasha Christie. She is a dream catalyst um, and she is going to drop some nuggets for us today. This is so, so timely. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. So Tasha, I was just reading your post about um, that you just posted, and you know that really did resonate. Talking about uh, that God is your source, not your government job. Really, honestly, not any job. You know, at this point in um, in our lives. Yeah. Um, well, I posted that this morning because I mean I get downloads all the time for stuff to post, um, but that kind of came to me because I've been seeing a lot of people obviously have been posting about the government shutdown and people, you know, they're about to lose their source of income, stuff like that. And um, I just wanted to point out to everybody that God is the source, you know, and because I feel like a lot of times as people of faith, we talk about faith, you know what I'm saying? But then when it comes time to actually be faith, we're, we're not, we fall short because a lot of times, in my opinion, in a traditional church and religion, we're not necessarily taught how to have faith. Um, and so that, that was just a reminder that, you know, whatever job you have, whatever clients you have, whatever, whatever you have, that's not the source of, of what's going on in your life. The source is always God and knows that, that job, that those clients, um, that child support, whatever it is you get that's coming into your life, um, those are just channels, you know? So as long as you're connected to God, to your source, whatever you call him, whether it be Jesus or Buddha or Allah or whoever, as long as you're connected to that infinite source, then your supply is, is infinite. I mean, it, there's no limit to what can happen for you in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And um, having a trust, too, in the times of uncertainty, because we're in a time of uncertainty right now for so many people who are experiencing um, the government shutdown, who've lost their job as well. So having mm -hmm. trust that, you know, that there is better on the other side as well. And so that's why I'm happy to have you to join us and share with us um, more about what you do and, you know, how people can get started um if they're experiencing this or if they're just looking to start something new regardless if they're in a, a government shutdown or losing their job so if, if uh, i'll allow you a chance if you would please tell us more about you and what you do um well i am natasha or tasha depending on you know who's talking to me most people call me tasha um in my personal life but you know people also call me natasha um, I am a dream catalyst for visionary women who are ready to start something new, transition out of their current situation that's not fulfilling, um, where they're either burnt out or overworked or just not happy into something new, whether it be a new career or a new business. Like maybe this is the time to actually start that dream project or dream business that you've been um, thinking about. You know forever um i know for me i have been really an entrepreneur um mindset anyway since i was a child so i knew when i was a kid no matter what i was um interested in at the time and my interests always varied you know for a while i wanted to be a doctor then i wanted to be a teacher then i wanted to be this like it was a, a bunch of stuff that i thought about doing, but no matter what I was thinking about at the time, I was always trying to figure out how I could turn it into some sort of business where I could be my own boss, um, partially because I grew up seeing my father do that for himself and he kind of taught us 
that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're the person who's in control um, as far as your income income is concerned. But if you're an employee, there'll always be a, a limited amount of money that you can make. Um, so I always kind of knew when I was a child, I was like, okay, well, I want to be able to control my own destiny. I want to be able to, to do just be magical and and have the life that I want. And the only way to do that in my mind at that time was to be an entrepreneur. Um, so if you're like me, you know, and you maybe since you were a child, you've been dreaming about being an entrepreneur and having your own thing um, and actually really making your mark on the world. And somehow or another, maybe you just caught up, got caught up in this quote unquote American dream that we're taught, you know, is the way to go, especially you know, as people of color, a lot of us are taught to, you know, go to school, get a degree or multiple degrees and then go get a safe job where, you know, we can be secure, you know, for the rest of our lives until retirement. Um, so, you know, but a lot of us are taught to do that and we do it, you know, because that's what's expected. But we're not always happy once we get that job. Once we get those degrees, we find that oftentimes we're not able to do all the things that we want and, and want it to and make the impact. Um, that we really, really want to make on this world. So, I mean, that's kind of what I help women to do in particular. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there definitely is no such thing as, you know, as a safe job, a safe career, um, or even being derailed from the path that you thought um, you were going on and then wanted something new, like you were saying, um, because it happens as people change and grow and come into a new mindset, even then they want something different. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's very necessary to have to have that in place where someone can be able to launch something new in their life. Um, yeah. Yeah. But even in like making life transitions, like in career transitions, I originally started out as I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. When I went to college, um, I majored in political science, you know, did the whole thing, studied for the LSATs, got into to law school with a full scholarship, um, you know, and did it for three semesters and didn't like it. And like the middle of my third semester, I dropped out. Um, and I, I switched the thing that I ended up doing was something totally different. Like it's not even related. I'm a speech pathologist, um, for those of you who don't know me, um, and I'm still practicing part-time right now, but like, that's something totally different from law school. So like when I figured out what I wanted to do, you know, um, I figured out what I had to do to do it. I had to go back to school, get prerequisites and all this stuff. Um, and I did it. You know, and I ended up using my career as a speech pathologist to accomplish some of my greatest dreams. Like I, I'm, I'm a small town girl. I'm originally from Louisiana, um, Lafayette, Louisiana, not New Orleans. You know, because New Orleans is what everybody, you know, they, they automatically, oh, you're from New Orleans. No, I'm not from New Orleans. I'm from Lafayette, which is about two and a half hours south of New Orleans. And it's small. It's a small college town. Um, kind of country. My parents are from Appaloosas, which is like maybe 20 minutes outside of Lafayette. And it's a small place. Like there's one Walmart, there's not a major mall, nothing like that. Like, so it's a country basically. Um, so I grew up in that environment and I dreamed of traveling, of, of living in the big city. Uh, New York was my choice. That was the number one place I knew I wanted to move to. Um, so I ended up doing that. Like after grad school, I originally went to Maryland, um, Hagerstown, and I didn't like it there. It, it kind of got derailed or whatever. That was my first clinical internship. And then what I ended up doing was when that didn't work out, I was like, okay, well, what can I do next? Maybe I can try New York again because I tried New York right after grad school and it didn't work. What I was trying to do at that time, I needed all kind of license, licensing and certification, which would have taken a couple of years for me to get. So I ended up settling for Maryland. Um, and then when that didn't work out, I got the opportunity to go to New York and I'm, I took it, you know, despite the fact that, you know, my parents really wanted me to come back home. 
you know, because they had sent me away, you know, I had gone away to do this and this didn't work out. So they were like, well, no, you need to come back home, you know, so you can figure out what you want to do, X, Y, C. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go to New York because that's what I always wanted to do, you know? And I felt like at the time, if I turn right back around and go back home, I'm never going to leave again. Like, I'll never get the courage to, to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because in their mind and in mine, I had already failed. You know what I'm saying? And what we know, what do we normally do when we when things don't go our way? We, a lot of times we kind of, you know, we kind of go back into our cocoon, our safety net. And I didn't do that. I kind of was just like, no, I'm going to take this chance and go to New York because this is what I always wanted to do. And if it doesn't work out, I can always move back home. I mean, it's not, you know, home is not going anywhere. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. And I was in New York for about four years. And then I ended up getting the opportunity to go to Dubai to work um, as a speech pathologist because I figured out somewhere along the way that native English speaking speech pathologists at that time were like in high demand because they have a large um, English speaking population and they need people who, you know, know what I, how to do what I do and actually, you know, speak English as their native language. So when I figured that out, I ended up going to Dubai, you know, and I stayed there for about eight, nine months. And then I came back here, you know, and then ended up now I'm in the D.C. area. Um, I've been here for about three and a half years. So, I mean, it, it really, my career, I actually really turned into something magical, too. Like, you don't have to just because you are working a nine to five. It doesn't mean that you have to be like everybody else. You know, like you can do some extraordinary things, you know, even in your career. So that's another thing that, you know, I encourage people to do is, is, to, is to figure out a way to really live your best life, regardless of whether you're in your nine to five still, whether you start a business. Like it's, it's all about who you're being, regardless of whatever situation you're in. Um, and I kind of was living that before I even knew what that meant, like. You know, I was always trying to figure out a way, like, how can I make this, you know, different? Like, how can I actually do what I want to do and enjoy it and have fun and stuff like that? So. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, because some people think that, you know, creating uh, an extraordinary life, it has to look a certain way or it has to be a certain way or they have to wait to um, a certain time. And I always like to tell people as well, you know, what you're saying is it's never too late. Uh, it's yeah. never too late to try something different. It's never too late. Yeah. Um, so if, if there is one thing that you can say to someone who is in a situation where they're feeling stuck um, or they're, you know, wanting something different, what is the one thing that you would tell them to to do to get started um right now right now i would tell them to figure out um what it is they want get clear on their desires and um once they figure that out to actually own them you know what i'm saying because a lot of times as as people we're taught to to either be ashamed of our desires or to, I mean, it's just it, that it's wrong for us to have them. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like always this message that you should just be grateful, you know, to have a job. I know that's, I've been told that many times. Like, oh, you should just be happy. My mom told me that over the holidays. Oh, you should be, just be happy to have a job, you know, because a lot of people don't have, a lot of people don't have work, you know? And I'm like, yeah, you can be grateful. Just because you're grateful though, that doesn't mean that you don't want more. And that you, it's, it's wrong for you to go after what you really, really want. Yes, great, be grateful right now for, for the things you have, but do that in a spirit of moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I would say. The first thing is to get clear on what you really, really, really want. Um, and that may take some some soul searching and some some time and some meditation, you know, some prayer, some communion with God. Like, hey, you know, what is your vision for my life? You know, um, and actually being open to hearing that and and being in a, a space of, of quiet, 
Because a lot of times if people were busy, 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 we get up in the morning, especially, which I don't have children yet, but I work with children regularly. Um, but I can imagine you have this little person and you have to take care of them. And a lot of women get up and just immediately start going. You know what I'm saying? But take some time in the morning to be quiet, you know, meditate, even if it's five minutes and get, get clear on what you really, really want. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's that is great. <clears throat> that is definitely great. So thank you so much for um for sharing your words of wisdom and encouragement as well. Um, because a lot of people may think they know or may think they figured out, and you know, life happens sometimes um where you have to you have to make those transitions or you have to adjust and if you're in that place, um, you know, Tasha has offered the insight to get clear on what it is that you want and to take that time um, in communion and in prayer and meditation to figure out your vision. So that is awesome. And if you want to get more from Christy, I invite you to check out um, our resource guide. Um, at bit.ly forward slash becoming my best self. You can download that um, and schedule a call with Tasha, um, especially if you're in that place right now where you're feeling stuck and you're in transition and trying to figure out what's your next steps in your career. Schedule a call with Christy, um, with Tasha, so that she can, she can provide you with that guidance. Yeah. And I can give you the link to a uh, direct link to the call is bit.ly forward slash talk to Natasha. That's T-A-L-K, the number two, N-A-T-A-S-H-A. I'm putting that in the comments right now. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. This has been good. I hope that um, if you all are catching the replay, um, link up with Tasha and, you know, don't be afraid to, to do something new and move forward with your life. Yep. I will be joining you all again. I hope that you all are blessed and encouraged. Thank you so much, Tasha, um, for coming and sharing those words of wisdom. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.